Hey everyone. Howdy. <laughs> All right, DevNet, or, uh, DevNet Create Theater session. We got Hank Preston up here to talk about CI/CD pipelines. So Hank, uh, let you take it away. All right. Thanks very much. How's everybody doing? Coming to the end, the final run of DevNet Create. Is anybody? Is this the second year? Who was here last year? I can't raise my hand because I couldn't actually make it. So we got one. Welcome back. You liked it so much last year, you came back for today. We appreciate that. Awesome. We'll see you all next year as well, I hope. Right? We'll be back once more. So welcome. We're going to talk today about how we can build a Net DevOps CI CD pipeline. And yep, you can do it too. So as Paul mentioned, my name is Hank Preston. I'm one of the evangelists in Cisco's DevNet organization, and I focus wholly on Net DevOps and network programmability, network automation topics, kind of anything that falls into that purview. I've got a background coming out of all sorts of different areas of technology, um, but I came back about a year and a half ago to DevNet to focus solely on network programmability and evolving network engineering into the future. And a lot of that for me is taking DevOps concepts that have worked really well for software developers and bringing them into the network engineering space and seeing what is it going to take to learn from everything that they've done really well and make it apply for us. And that's a big part of what today's session is going to be is talking about how we can take continuous development, CICD practices, and apply them back inside of a network framework. We're going to start out with a look at today's network configuration pipelines. Before we can see where we want to get to, we got to talk about where we're coming from and be a little honest with ourselves, because that might be a bit painful if there's any network engineers out there. Right? Sometimes it's hard to look in the mirror and accept some of our faults, but we got to see those so that we can see where we can head and what the benefits are looking forward. Then we'll talk about what a DevOps CI CD pipeline looks like from a software developer's perspective, and then figure out how we can map that into a network engineering area as it goes through. And then we'll actually see this in action. We'll look at how we can manage network configuration across the production network using network as code and configuration management strategies around a CI CD fashion as it goes through. So that's our goal. Our goal is to come up with a strategy so Carl doesn't look so confused with this leaky pipeline all around him as he goes in. And that's the direction I think we're all headed to, is how can we be more efficient in our network configuration as we go through. So, Today's network configuration pipelines. We have to configure our networks today, right? We all have networks. At some point, they have to be configured. And whether we have a very robust and articulated and well thought out pipeline, or one that just we kind of figure out as we go along, we all have a pipeline as we go through. And if we're honest with ourselves, the reality is that our configuration pipelines are functional, but a bit fragile today, right? Network configuration and network engineering is sometimes more art than science, right? And this feels good. I've got a hunch, right? This worked well for me last time. It's probably going to work out well for me today. And the tribal knowledge of our key engineers is critical to the success of mo most change windows as they go through. If we have a change window scheduled and Bob, the network engineer, happens to be on PTO that day, we will change our change window to make sure Bob is there, because he's the only guy that knows why that ACL exists. Sound familiar? Right? This is our current state. Right? I love it, right? Many of us love looking like Carl, the network engineer, hunkered down in a data center with a console cable. But that's not the world of the future. We can't be hunkered down on the floors doing hand-to-hand -hand combat one switch at a time. We're not going to be able to scale that way. And that's why we want to head. That's where we're headed. These quotes sound familiar to anybody else? Every time we implement a network change, something goes wrong. Isn't it great? Our switch hasn't been rebooted in six years. Or this bottom one, we cannot update or change our network. The business won't allow it. The network is too critical. You are not allowed to touch it. Right? I'm seeing heads nod. These are honest quotes. They're paraphrased, because I wasn't writing them down when I was talking with network engineers out there. But these are things I've actually heard. And if we look at some of the studies, they back it up. 74% of operators report that network changes have significantly impacted their business operations. 97% of operators will admit that human factors have caused network outages. Let's be honest with ourselves. How many of us in this room have done something that has caused a network outage? Right? It happens. Right? Those are learning experiences. But frankly, I learned something. I learned I don't want to have that happen again. That is a tough conversation to have as it goes through. And 22% of unplanned outages are caused by human error. That's actually a lower percentage than I would have thought, but that's the one that the stats keep coming through. Now, why is it? What is driving all of these things as they go? Why are these quotes as they go in, and why do we all laugh when we hear them? Because we know they're true. 
Well, it's because network configuration pipelines today look like this. They are sequential and manual infrastructure provisioning. The change window rolls up, right? The three newest network engineers drew the short straws, so we got Bob, Billy, and Jane. They're on tap for the network change that night. We've got 40 switches, and so we carve them up. A bunch of them go to Bob, some of them go to Jane. Billy only gets like two because he's kind of slow and we don't trust him to do his full share. And then they have at it. The change window opens up and they go to it and they grab their paper and they start hammering away at the keyboard. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. They get through their first switch, copy, run, start, on to the next one. They get to the end, change window's over, it's high fives all around, and then they realize that Bob forgot half of his and they've got to file an emergency change window for the next day so they can do it all over again. Right? This is how change and how pipeline for configurations happen today. And they result in snowflake infrastructure with organic configurations. What that means is despite the fact that every one of our network engineers had the same runbook, were going through the same policies, they all had differences of opinion, right? Do they put spaces in descriptions? Do they put dashes, right? Do we uppercase or lowercase? Those are inconsequential, but what about the one that, the Bob that was a little bit lazy, he was running behind and he said, you know what? I'm not gonna configure all of those spanning tree priorities, right? The defaults are good enough for me, we'll go through. So our entire configuration is snowflakes. Everyone's a bit different. And very few of us have the opportunity to go back to a site or an update and say, you know what? I don't have to do anything to this site, but our network configuration standards have changed, and I need to make sure that this site is up to date with our current standards. No, we can't do that. All our configurations are organic. They're built based on whatever happened to be our standards at the point in time we did it. This is terrible, and this drives all of these challenges that we're seeing out there. So how does DevOps do CI/CD? How are software developers successfully delivering them today? So software applications start out with developers writing code, right? They do that, and then it kicks into the development pipeline, the software delivery pipeline. And the first phase is integration. All of the software developers, they take their independent code, it goes into integration, and integration engineers pull them together, they compile them, they package them, and then they test it to make sure that that code is successful as a package. Integration phase. When the integration phase is over, it moves to the delivery phase. Our tested code is now packaged up by packaging engineers and put into some sort of artifact repository so people can find it, right? Maybe that's a Docker image, maybe it's posting something as an OVA, Maybe it's just sending something someplace, but we take the final code and we deliver it in a location where people can find it. And then our deployment engineers come in and they take that delivered code and they install it and they configure it for use. This is how software delivery has happened for years, and traditionally it's been a manual practice. There are integration engineers, packaging engineers, delivery or operations engineers that do this. Well, that slowness and that process was a huge problem as DevOps and agility and these things went through, and that led to continuous development. Continuous development says, you know what? All those steps are important. We still need to do all of that, but we can't sit around and wait for everything to be manually done. And so the new pipelines are CICD pipelines. Same phases, but now it's continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment. And all of the steps that used to be done by manual engineers are now being done through automation and tooling, right? We've got Jenkins servers or Team City servers running in the background. They're ch running test cases. They're doing the compilation for us. All the automation is being done, and we're driving this thing in a consistent fashion in a much faster way as we go through. What we need to figure out is how can we take this and apply it to the network? What is it going to look like when we take a CI-CD concept and apply it into the network? And roughly, I think it's gonna look a bit like this. We have to start out by treating our network as code. We've all heard infrastructure as code. Who's heard infrastructure as code before? Raise your hands, all right. Network as code. For me, I, I call it out specifically different because infrastructure as code primarily is for the cloud, right? We define our network configurations in the cloud with VPCs and security groups and all of those things that clouds make easy. If we truly want to do network configuration in a CI-CD fashion, we need to treat the entire network as code. We need to treat our WAN configurations. We need to treat our enterprise network configurations. We need to treat the foundation in our data center that our cloud is built on as code. So those configurations need to be stored where code is stored, source control. We put all of our configurations into source control. 
When we want to do a proposed change across our campus or our enterprise or our WAN, well, we spin up a branch and we propose that inside of a branch that can be isolated and tested and validated. And when we feel pretty good about that as a network developer, we commit that in and we send it up into source control so our build servers can pick up and start the cycle. Our build servers will spawn a test network onto which we can actually deploy this proposed configuration. So we don't deploy to production, we've got a test network, we deploy it there. We then run a full suite of network tests to make sure the network is actually running successfully. And when I say network tests, I do mean more than just can I ping from one side of the network to the other. That is not a valid explanation if the network is running healthy, right? We have to be able to test that the applications, the network functions, the routing protocols, the features we've turned on, we need to test that they're working as expected. And then finally, if that's all successful, let's stage that for a production deployment. Or we go all the way to the end and we say, you know what, the tests look good, just push it into production. We don't need to wait till 3 a.m. on Saturday, five weeks from now to run this. We feel good, we wanna push it in. That is going to give us CICD for network configuration pipelines. To do this successfully is more than just kind of slideware. We need a different way. We need different sets of tools that we put into our, our, our own tool bag as we go through. Many of us, if we're on this journey to network programmability and automation, may have already done this bit, right? We've got network devices. We tackle our network devices with some sort of a virtualization platform. We're leveraging new interfaces like NetConf or gRPC, right? all of the ones that are there. And we have a configuration management strategy to deliver that. Maybe that's an open source solution like Ansible or Puppet or Chef. Maybe that's a, uh, an architecture, a controller driven architecture like ACI or some orchestration solution that goes through. But we've implemented an, a configuration management strategy that goes in. If you've done this and many of us are on the way here, that's excellent. That is network automation, that's network programmability, that's not net DevOps. Net DevOps is when we can start to bring in these other areas. We start taking those configurations for configuration management and storing them in distributed source control that is then linked into some sort of a build server that monitors for changes that happen. And when those changes happen, they kick off the, the, the deployments and the tests that go in. And speaking of tests, we need to replace and have alternatives to just ping for network testing and verification. We need to be able to go through and say, I've deployed BGP in my network. Is BGP operating as expected? Do I have the neighbor relationships I expected? Did I learn the routes I expected? Am I getting flapping as they go through? If I'm configuring OSPF, the same types of questions. And this is frankly an area where we're starting to see some good traction and new tooling coming out from the uh, open source community and different vendors, but there's a ton of work needed in that network test tooling space. The same thing with telemetry. Is my network running healthy? These are solutions and tools and questions we need to answer. But the biggest change that we need to do is at the base of this. Many of us out there have a single network that we have in our organizations. We have what we call production, and we only can deploy to production. That's great, that's not great in the slightest. We need to have effective development environments, test environments, and production environments. If we go to what were our target here, right? Net DevOps, bring DevOps into the network. If we were to go to any software developer in a DevOps shop and say, you know what, we want you to do your job, we want you to push out releases three times a day, but you know what, we can't afford dev instances anymore, so you have to make sure that when you push it, it goes to production and that's the only place you can go. Right? Nothing would happen. Nobody would make changes. Developers would leave that organization and go someplace else. But we in the network have had that requirement and pressure for years and it's one that we continue to get kind of pushback on. In order to be successful, in order to truly go down a net DevOps fashion to really go at scale and tackle automation and programmability, we need to have the same resources that software developers have and have been successful with. We need a development environment where every net DevOps engineer can explore and experiment on what they think they need to do. Once they've got it in place, they wanna check that in and have robust test environments that mimic production, where we can actually roll our configurations into them and make sure that the network configured as expected and tested appropriately. And that will drive so much higher levels of of consistency and drive the fear away when the time comes to push into production because we've already tested it. Test networks aren't perfect, but neither is a test software environment. But when we don't have anything, we all are biting our nails when those change windows come through. 
Make sense? All right. So how will this look? What does this look like as we go through? So I'm going to switch out of the slides for a minute. We're going to walk ourselves through. Oh, it looks like Docker wants to update. We can do that later. All right, so we're going to look at kind of what does a workflow look like when we think about a CI CD fashion as it goes in. So we start out with where is the network configuration go through? So here is my source control system. I'm using GOGS. It's just an open source GitHub clone. It gives me an ability to use Git, but deploy it on my own. And so in here, in this repository of network CI CD lab is where I store my configurations. Where's my mouse? Come on. There it is. So inside here, we can see that I've got a folder called Ansible. And in this Ansible folder is where my network configurations are going through. That just happens to be the network as code or the configuration management solution. And what you would expect from an Ansible perspective is in here, and that goes through. And I currently have a running network going through. So let's check on what we've got going in. Actually, no, I think I've got a couple. Yeah, let's talk through it a little bit. Before we go into the demo, I got ahead of myself. I was excited to go in. Let's walk through the environment we have. So we've seen what we're, our workflow here is I'm going to pretend that I'm Carl, and I'm going to create a proposed branch and work inside of a branch for my changes, and I will update that Ansible configuration that we just looked at. Now, once I've updated it on my laptop in my dev environment, I'm going to test that locally using Vagrant. Vagrant is another DevOps open source tool that is used by software developers to manage development environments. I'm going to use it in a net DevOps fashion to manage my dev environment for the network. Once I feel good about my change, I will push that into source control, into my GOG system, and then my build server will kick off. I'm using drone.io. It's like any other of the build servers that are out there, Jenkins or Team City. It just happens to be the one I like to use. And so it will start, and it will spin up an entire test network that mimics production using Cisco's viral platform, which is one of the network simulation tools. And so through the APIs, we'll dynamically bring up a test network onto which we can deploy our network changes using Ansible, the exact same Ansible configurations that we're going to use in production, we'll deploy into test. And we will test to validate that it's working successfully. And then we'll send a notification using Cisco Spark so that Carl, the network engineer, or Hank, can know, know whether that change was successful or if there was a problem as it went in. Now, what we want to make changes to is we want to use our network configuration pipeline for this to manage SNMP configuration. Now, why SNMP configuration? We've talked about what the current network configuration pipeline looks like, but you can't go from the current network configuration pipeline to a fully automated CICD pipeline for your entire network configuration overnight. You will break something. It will go horribly wrong, and you will all update your resume. The first step is to pick something that's fairly minor and inconsequential to prove yourself and learn the tooling that goes in. And my recommendation is pick something that should it go belly up the network doesn't go down. And for me, I go to SNMP, right? Nobody likes it when SNMP goes down, but if I'm not getting traps for a few minutes or my, my graphs aren't updating, it's not the end of the world. Packets still flow. And so what we're going to do is we are going to update our SNMP community strings across our entire production network using a CI CD flow fashion. We'll work inside of a dev branch and we'll test locally and make sure that we feel pretty good about it. Following that, we will move it into source control so it goes through. And that's where CI CD will kick off. Now, what we're working inside of here is this. We'll be controlling that SNMP configuration, both community strings as well as the trap information. And I have my three environments. My dev environment is going to be driven by that vagrant platform so I can bring up a single network switch, make sure my configurations are working appropriately. In test, I've got a test network that simulates production using two switches of the same types as they go through, and I can deploy my configuration off to those and test and make sure that it works at scale. And then finally, when the time comes, it can go into production as it goes in. Now, we're controlling SNMP. I want to make sure that it's successful. So my test in this case is not can I ping the device, because that's irrelevant to SNMP. It's I've just updated the community strings. Can I still make a query using the new community strings and get proper data back? That's a decent test of SNMP, and that will tell us whether it was successful as it goes in and we'll use the pipelines to make that work. So let's see this in hand. So we'll start off with a look at the production environment as it goes in. So if I go, Telnet. So I'm gonna Telnet into one of the production switches and see what our current SNMP configuration looks like. Is that big enough for folks in the back? I can make the text bigger. Good? Big. I can't tell, is that a thumbs up or a big it bigger? Thumbs up, okay. Uh, include SNMP. 
So here we can go through, and I'm just taking a look at the SNMP configuration, and we can see that I've got the community strings of new to secure read and new to secure write are configured, as well as a couple of hosts uh, down here configured as well with those strings. So this is production. Now I could just go in here and change them, but that's not in a good net DevOps fashion, and it's certainly one of the areas we want to get to is we don't make configuration changes by hand in production. Running show commands, checking status, I'm a big fan. CLI is not going away for any of that but I should not be able to go into configuration mode here. But I do need to make the changes. And so I'm gonna exit out of the production switch, and let's see how I can do this in a network as code fashion. And so as I mentioned, we're driving this configuration using Ansible. If you're not familiar with Ansible, it's like any of the configuration management solutions. It combines orchestration instructions, what do I want to do, with the details about what I want to configure. What we're looking at here is a YAML file that, that is, has all the specifics about the what I want to configure. And down here, I can see that I've got two variables, one for a read community and one for a write community. So we'll go ahead and we'll update these to devnet create and devnet create write. All right, so I've updated my YAML file, and that's going to be read in by the actual Ansible playbook that goes through. Now I'm in a net DevOps fashion. I want to make sure that I may, didn't make any changes, so I want to operate this and test this in a development environment first. So to do that, what we're using is a tool, as I mentioned, called Vagrant. And if I do a Vagrant status, we'll see that I have running an iOS device right on my laptop, so I can go ahead and run my playbook against this one here. So if I go, cheating a little bit with some remembering the types from before, so this is the Ansible playbook command. The dash I says, I want to deploy this to a particular inventory. In this case, it's my dev hosts. And the playbook is the same playbook that we use across all of the configuration. It's just the site.yaml. It's the full network site configuration. So I go ahead and run this. And we should be able to see this go. And demo gods hopefully are with me, and I'll cross my fingers. So to prove that it's there, the 127001, so this is targeting a device running on my laptop. And it's going to go ahead and process through the playbook to get this configured appropriately. The first step for updating SNMP configuration is to remove old, outdated SNMP configuration. So we can see where those are getting pulled out here. Remove the existing SNMP configurations. It then goes ahead and sets up the new ones. And then it will go ahead and do the same thing for those host configurations that were set up. And so if everything goes well, this should end successfully and give me a, a, a success message and things will look good. And it's just about done. And one more, there it goes. So it worked good. My development instance, right, I feel pretty good about this. I don't think I'll embarrass myself if I check this in and things are gonna fail. So the next step in a network as code in CICD fashion is to check this into source control. So if I do a git status, I can see that I have indeed modified the group vars all.yaml file. That's the one that we changed. And so I can git add group vars all.yaml, and then we do a commit. And this commit will actually lock this change in. Git m demo on stage, please work. All right, I've committed it locally on my laptop, and now I need to push this up into source control. So git push. When I push this up, it's taking the commit from my local laptop, sending it up to GOGS, and then that will kick off a build across my build server. Or it should. Refresh, yeah. There we go. So here we can see this is the drone interface showing that a build is currently running. And we see the yellow indication, and it started 17, 19 seconds ago. And now normally, if you're doing this in real life, you wouldn't actually like watch it, right? the whole watch pot never boils thing. But from a demo perspective, we can see what's going on in the background. And so the first step in, that drone does is clone down the network as code repository. So pulls it down, and then starts the build off. We're in the integration phase, if we think of our CI-CD pipeline, and there's several steps to do a proper integration. The first one is to start the test network. And so here, if I look at this, we can see where it actually launched a simulation network using Cisco Viral through there. So baked into the pipeline is to go ahead and do that. If I switch over, what we'll actually see is I can see that I've got two simulations running. My production network happens to also be a simulated network, but typically that would be a real one. And we can see the integration test has been spun up. That was spun up by the CI-CD system to go ahead and process against. Once that was spun up, the second step went through, which was the integration configure the test network. And inside of here, 
what it's doing is actually taking the playbook that I tested locally on my laptop against one just development switch, and now it's pushing that against the test environment, which has the entire test network that simulates what production looks like. And we can see as this process is through, the status as this pushes it out into the test environment. Now it's actually running this, so we get to see how long Hank can talk and delay while the demo runs in the background as we go through, and we'll see how it goes in. All right, so the, the test went through, or the configuration went through and everything was okay, and then our next step is integration run network tests. Now as I said, we wanna make sure that this works. Just because Ansible successfully was able to shove configuration at my network doesn't tell me that the network is actually working as expected. So you have to have a strategy to test it. And in here, I'm just using another Ansible playbook to make a query using that new SNMP community string to see if it was successful. And we can see in the output that it was indeed, I was able to get back the system names from the test environment. Once that was done, it went ahead and destroyed the test network. I'm done with that test, right? Get rid of it, save those resources for something else. And then now that we've gotten through the integration phase, we know that the changes are good, delivery is what comes next. And the way that, that's not, that output's not terribly interesting. We'll look at the pipeline in a second. But what we're doing in delivery is we're taking the, the configuration that was in the dev branch and saying, okay, that's good. Let's prep this and ready for deployment to production by moving it from the dev branch to the master branch. And so our pipeline does that as the next step and then sends the notification. If I look over in Spark, I should have a notification. I do indeed, it's down here. It came at 225, which was a minute ago. So there's the notification that it went through. Now we'll notice there's another build kicked off immediately right after. And what that is, is this first build that we just looked at, it's see where it says push to dev. That was my development, that was my test environment. That went successfully, it then merged those changes into master and that kicks off another build for production. And so now inside of here, we can see that the deployment phase for configure prod network, this is making the configuration change against the production switches, right? I don't have rights as a person to make the changes, but my, my orchestration, my build systems have the ability to log in and push those changes into production. And they went successfully. And then down here, we again run the tests against production to make sure that we can still use SNMP against the network as it goes through. And we can see my prod switches, all three of them are responding back successfully. I will have gotten down here another Spark message, and I did here, and we can see it's small on the screen, but this one shows the branch master indicates that this was the production deployment. So my full pipeline went through. Let's see if we actually updated them in the configuration on the prod switches. So if I tell that back into that production switch, show run, not earn, show run, include, and we can see indeed, I now have devnet create read for my hosts, and then devnet create read and devnet create write for the SNMP configurations. The old SNMP community strings are gone, Having had to do late night SNMP community string changes at businesses in the past, the thing I always forgot was to get rid of the old strings, huge security hole. We successfully added new community strings, but all of those insecure ones still exist. All right, so we need a strategy to keep them through, and that's part of the value of doing proper automation and strategy, is you can make sure every step is done, and computers in general are pretty good at following instructions, humans not so good. And so we can make sure the entire runbook is done successfully. Make sense? Interesting? So I know what at least a few of you might be thinking, right? How'd that work, right? You're over here in your tunic in the medieval ages thinking, that looks like a lot of unicorn stuff, right? Clouds are unicorns, CICD, it's another unicorn. And the last time I tried to build a unicorn, I ended up with a donkey corn instead, and clearly this is some magic and black magic that goes through. So let's see under the hood. What does it actually take to build this? Because it's not that complicated. Frankly, any CI-CD system, whether you're doing it for software de development and delivery or you're doing it for network configuration, is simply automating the same things you already do now. It's just wrapping it up in an automation framework. For Drone, which is the automation tool that we're using here from a build system, they, it has a, a file called drone.yaml, and a lot of the build systems have these. You might see a, a Travis.yaml and other ones that are there. And what the drone.yaml file is, is it is the orchestration, it is the build instructions for what you're trying to accomplish. And it's just a YAML file. This is a simplified version to get the point across, but it lays out the steps necessary to do the configuration. Up at the top, we see notify. So we're gonna notification. I wanna make sure that whether that build was successful or failed, 
I have an answer. I know did it work and I can re respond effectively. After that, we have the three phases for CI CD, integration, delivery, and deployment. And then whatever commands are necessary to make sure that those phases are accomplished appropriately. So the pipeline file, this is what defines what our build is going to look like. And it's up to you as the architect in the net DevOps engineering world to just replicate. What would you do manually if you had to do this? If you manually wanted to test something, what would you have to do? You put it in the pipeline file. If you have to manually deploy this to production, what do you have to do? We build it into the pipeline file. This is how CI CD works. It's not magic, it's just saying, well, what did a manual person used to do? Now we're just gonna automate it as it goes in. And so if we drive this through, the first phase, which I call phase zero, because it's before the actual build starts, is our notification bits. And our goal at this point is to make sure that we can be notified of the status following every build. And because I work at Cisco, they make sure I use Cisco Spark. But if you have a different collaboration platform you're using, almost any of them today could be the target for these types of notifications. Now the way this looks inside of the YAML file is here. We've got our pipeline definition, and then we've got the phase, spark notify. Drone happens to be wrapped very tightly around Docker, and so every phase along the way, it just grabs a Docker image to run them through. So we can see the H Preston drone spark, and that's a, just a Docker image I created that knows how to send spark messages from drone. We inject, what do we want to say? The message here is build done, and it'll automatically put in the success failure pieces that are there. With the notification element of our pipeline done, we move into the integration phase. And for integration, the goal here is to deploy our entire code base, and for us that's the network as code configuration, off to our test network, our test environment. We want to run our validation tests and make sure that things look successful as they go through. So we go back into our configuration, our, our uh, drone.yaml file, and it's one file, but I can only fit so much on one slide. And so the key chunks that are here is our integration, start test network. Once again, it links back to a Docker image that knows how to interact with viral to start a test network. And so what test file do we start? What action do I want to take, which is create? After the test network is up, we run integration config test network. And there we can just see the same Ansible commands you would run manually, I'm going to run to take the code and deploy that into the test network as it goes in. In the integration phase is a second playbook run, which does the test, and then there's the destroy, which looks just like the start one, but instead of action create, it's action destroy. So we spin up a test network, we deploy the configuration to it, we test that the configuration was successful, and then we destroy the test network. That's our integration phase, and it's just using the same types of commands that we would do if we did it manually. Following that, assuming things went well, we want a delivery. We want to do continuous delivery. And this is when, inside of the DevOps practice, we publish our artifacts and make them ready for use. For us, this means taking the configuration that was pushed into the, into the development branch, the dev branch, and merging that into the production branch so that it can go through. That's all we have to do to deliver, is just get it staged from dev and into master. It's fairly simple. It's the same git commands I would have done if I did it manually. So I check out the master, I merge in the dev branch, and then I push that up. That's all, and in this case, rather than doing it myself at a terminal, Drone will do this for me. Now once it's been delivered, this push to master will actually kick off another build, but now it's gonna be a build based on the master branch. And we can see all of the steps we've seen so far down at the bottom have when, branch, dev. And that says these steps only run when it's a development build. When we get into production, now we wanna deploy this off to our production network. And so our pipeline file for this looks quite similar. Deployment, config prod network. It's the exact same image file, the Docker image. And we now are just running the playbook off to host prod and the same playbook that was there. And we can see the when branch is master. This is the build for production as it goes through. And then down at the bottom, we've got where we would run the network tests. Again, that same Ansible playbook as it goes through. These are the build files that go in. I'll show you the actual drone file now that we've kind of talked through the steps that are there. And that's here. So as I said, it's a single file called, uh, it's a hidden file, so .drone.yaml that would be at the root of your repository. And we can see the steps that are there. So integration, start test network. It brings it up, it starts that based on a file that's stored inside of the repository. We then have our integration configure test network and then run test network or network tests to make sure that the network configuration that we made the changes for are successful across the test environment. We can then destroy it using just the destroy action against viral. 
And our merge to master, there's those git commands that take all of the proposed changes from dev and say, okay, they're checked out. We feel pretty good about them. Go put them in master. Then we get into these here where we can see the branch is now branch master. So when that second build kicks off, it only processes the master steps, which happen to be the deployment phases. And we can see Ansible playbook hosts prod, but it's the same playbook. That's key. We don't want to deploy a different playbook to production. We want the exact same configuration to go through. And then we run our network tests, and then finally we have the Spark Notify. Okay. So as we look through these, what we've delivered was that full pipeline we talked about. We started locally, right? I'm a net DevOps engineer. I make the changes on my laptop using the infrastructure as code, the network as code tools, and it may be something you're already doing. You're already using Ansible to drive configuration. Not much different there, but what is different is that we use a dev environment, some place to test this before I go off and try to test it at scale or deploy it to production. When I feel good about it, we commit the changes and we start our loop. We kick off a build where the first step is to spin up that test network. Once the test network is ready, we can deploy our configuration that's been proposed to the test network and then run our network test to make sure SNMP is indeed still working. After that's through, it'll tear the test network down and then move those code changes up into production, which will kick off another build where we deploy it into the production network rather than into test. So in closing, kind of review where we're at at this point. So what we wanted to tackle was take the CICD framework from a software development perspective continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, but apply that for the network. And we've seen how the changes go through. It is not a direct mirror, right? Deploying software is not the same as deploying network configurations. And what we walk through here is just kind of the first stage, showing how we can start to map these pieces in. And one of the things I'm most excited about is to see how NetDevOps CICD evolves as more of us start to experiment with this and work on it and use the different tools that are out there. Now, why we're doing it is so that we can have a better pipeline experience. By achieving and going with a net DevOps CICD pipeline, we will have consistent version-controlled infrastructure deployed with parallel and automated provisioning. I worked on that phrase for a while. How's it sound? <laughs> Pretty good, huh? We all want that. This is where we're trying to head. What we have to recognize is simply doing network automation or network programmability or playing with Python is not going to get you all the way there. You have to take the network as code concepts and treat your configurations for your entire network inside of source control and work on it that way. And we have to get to our deployments where it's not just a network engineer running a playbook. The same guy that used to copy and paste from Notepad is now just running a playbook, right? That's not a big lift and an improvement. We have to bring in these other toolings to go through. I love version-controlled infrastructure. This idea to say, you know what? I've got an infrastructure configuration. My source of truth is what's in source control, and the master branch is what my network should be. And if the master branch is different from my running network, my master branch is right. And that's going to be a hard one for a lot of us to get to. Because many of us today, the only place we can say for sure is that what our network is supposed to be configured is the way the network is actively configured today. I don't care how many Visio diagrams or Excel spreadsheets or Notepad++ templates you have, odds are the only place you would be safe saying this is my network configuration, absolutely, is if you look at your network. That's okay for how we've done it in the past. In the future, what we need to say is what's in source control, that is right. And if some network engineer went rogue and cowboy and logged in and made a configuration change, that's wrong. I don't care if packets are flowing, and he made the change for a very good reason. What's correct is what's in source control. Anything else is a deviation, and we want to drive back to that. If that cowboy needs to make a change, go through the process. Everything will be better as, along the way. And we get away from Billy, Bob, and Jane trying to manually put the configurations out in a, par in a sequential fashion. We end up with our parallel and automated configuration. That's where we're headed. That's where we need to get into. So what do you do next? If you've been interested by what's going through here and some of the other Net DevOps topics you're seeing, it's actually a, a, probably the primary focus I'm doing in DevNet these days is trying to figure out what does this look for us as network engineers in the future. There are tons of readings on blogs and other areas that are out there. We've delivered webinars and learning labs that go through. 
And if you want to get your hands on this demonstration that we went through, hopefully by the end of next week, I will put the final touches on a learning lab up on DevNet, learninglabs.cisco.com, where you can actually build this entire pipeline from scratch. You get to use all of my infrastructure from the DevNet sandbox. You bring a laptop. We'll give you everything necessary so that you can replicate this entire demo and then break it and see how it works. Do your first Net DevOps CICD pipeline on me in Learning Labs. And we should have that up by the end of next week. And I've now said that on camera, so now I'm committed to actually make sure it gets released. And then follow some of the videos. I've been putting my own thoughts around what Net DevOps means, what is network as code, what are the benefits for configuration management. Not because I think I'm necessarily right on all of these, but because I want to start a dialogue with the community. I want to hear from everybody else. What are you doing to make your networks better? How are you applying Net DevOps practices through there? What's worked well for you? I'm only one guy at DevNet. I certainly don't have all the answers. I want to learn from everybody else that's trying this out there. So join the community as it goes in. And be sure to reach out and stay connected. You can follow me on Twitter at HF Preston, or reach out to me direct through email or Cisco Spark at hapresto at cisco.com. Or you can follow me on GitHub, where almost all of my demos get posted at hpreston. In retrospect, after having had to say three different names that I'm known as, I realize I should have made them all the same, but some things are too late to change. And be sure to follow Cisco DevNet on all the social medias for the latest across all of the programmability capabilities that are going through, across collaboration, data center, networking, security, IoT, and I'm sure I left something out. We're lots of activity across the board and what's going on from a Cisco perspective. With that, I'm all done. Thank you so much for the attention and going through on this. I'll stick around for a few minutes if folks have questions. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your time here at DevNet Create, and I hope to see you all next year. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Hank. Mm -hmm. Coming up next in this room, we're going to do the, the Camp Create uh, showcase. So, um, sorry, Sylvia, I'm getting around your picture. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so please stick around for that. It should be really interesting to see what, uh, what they came up with over the last day and a half. So see you soon. Thanks, everybody.